Um, so just to introduce you, um, so today's hosts, we have Stuart Moss and Pete Saunders. Uh, they are both from High Level Software, which is part of the Zonal family. Uh, today, the topic, uh, the role uh, of online travel agents and drive more direct bookings. So handing over to you, Stuart and Pete, um, maybe you want to start with why you chose this topic. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in February this year, together with uh, one of the hospitality industry's leading data and insight consultancy, CGI by Nielsen IQ, we launched the latest research report entitled Holiday at Home, What Guests Want from Hotels in 2023. Uh, and this exclusive consumer research that surveyed 3,000 people who had stayed in a hotel in the past six months uh, and asked their opinions and preferences about UK hotels. Uh, and the report offered us some fantastic insight into the current emerging trends and opportunities and challenges. Uh, and it highlighted specifically some interesting themes about how guests book their accommodation. Uh, specifically, the research highlighted more than a third of uh, consumers, the 37%, uh, use OTAs to find and book accommodation. Uh, obviously, Booking.com, uh, one of the biggest names, there's probably not a, a big surprise, not the most popular site, but 58%. Uh, and 53% of the consumers say OTA sites are easy to use, uh, but 50% of those who used OTAs didn't realise that they take commission, uh, which obviously was a very interesting thing for us to, uh, to hang on with some hoteliers. Now, knowing this, 63% now said they would book directly in the future, knowing about the commission and being more aware of uh, what, what hoteliers are paying out to OTAs. Uh, lack of trust was also an issue, with uh, a third of hotel guests saying that they trust sites such as Booking.com, uh, and 60% of consumers who stayed in a hotel in the last six months booked direct. So 41% of those also find hotels' own websites untrustworthy versus the OTAs. And only half of the consumers say hotels' own websites are easy to use. So obviously we're in the interest of uh, facilitating the booking of bedrooms. It's our bed and butter. So when you unpick those points, uh, there's an education piece around OTAs. Uh, there's certainly an education piece for hoteliers about how their website's performing and how it's a shop window for their business and what it's doing to encourage trade. Uh, and ultimately, I think there's a sentiment value there about direct bookings that we all need to tap into and, uh, and educate people more. So we found this very interesting. We've, we've talked about it a lot. We've, we've targeted parts of our business around it. Uh, and that's why, in a nutshell, we chose this topic today. Um, so Pete, obviously, is a, a knowledgeable chap as well and worked in hotels for a long time. I did 20 years in hotels, uh, and it's something we're, we're pretty passionate about educating our, our current customers on, on how we can help them. Uh, and that's why we are here. Excellent. Indeed. So we Excellent. do have, um, I suppose it'd be good, it'd be good for, for Pete to kick off the chat because Pete's just joined us as our new head of relationships. Uh, and Pete before was head of sales and revenue for a, a hotel group. Uh, more recently than I. Hmm. Uh, yeah, no, thank you, uh, Stuart. I think, really, I suppose, firstly, we should address the elephant in the room. And I, and I, and as uh, hoteliers and uh, in the industry, I think what we dislike about the OTAs is receiving that commission bill each month. Uh, that's where I think where the main pain point is. And I suppose if you were to dive into it a, a little bit more. Um, you know, it's that not really knowing the guest um, because the OTAs harvest all of that data and um, and, and and don't share um, with uh, with the hoteliers. Um, but if you were honest with yourself, I think that there is a role for the OTA um, in your marketing mix. Um, they, as as you say, uh, in and the research has shown. They, they do have a role uh, and guests do uh, do trust them. Um, and it, it's about, you know, I think not trying to eliminate them from uh, from a, uh, your your source of acquisitions of reservations, but it's actually having a healthy mix of some, you know, travel agents um, and and obviously, but drive the more you drive, uh, direct the less commission uh, you pay uh, it, it, at the end uh, of the month. You, you can look at that commission in two ways. You can either look at it as a, a cost of acquisition or sort of a, a slightly easier pill to swallow if you kind of build it into your marketing budget. Um, you, you think, what, well, if we weren't spending it on commission, you know, how would we spend it? And, it, you know, 
if you haven't got a strong direct uh, marketing campaign, you know, it's probably actually money well spent um, on on commission because, you know, there's uh, it's worth having an empty room, 100 percent of an empty room rather than, um, you know, losing, you know, 15 or whatever percent commission to a an actual sale. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, Pete, just to frame the conversation. Yeah, also, please. I also uh, run a, the commercials of a group, and as I arrived, they'd lost prominence with the OTAs. And in the absence of field sales to prop up the hotel uh, and, and marketing, you know, it hurt, and it took a long time to replace. Mm. Um, but the, the I suppose the marketing mix is to get these people in, entice them, convert them into your ecosystem, and then push them forward as a direct customer. Um, which I guess, it, when and how should hotels be using them? Is, is the is the question Pete really isn't it when when do you use an OTA I, uh, I think I think quite quite a lot of well very like definitely smaller companies that don't have uh, or smaller hotels that don't have big marketing budgets sort of re almost rely 100% on OTAs just because of uh, because they can reach far and wide that the smaller hotels just don't have that capability to do so um so yeah, it's it's really sort of educating or trying to work out how they can drive more business. I think, um, but yeah, definitely you know sort of uh, the, definitely the smaller hotel companies use them massively, don't they? Mm. They do, and I think you yeah. know opening a new site is very useful to have that tap that you can turn on off. But I think um, one of the things that we've certainly started to talk to our customers about is um, when those people are coming through your business, A, why, and B, are you talking to them? What incentives are you giving your reception to, to ask Mr. Moss why he stayed every Tuesday for the last three weeks on Bookie.com? And how do you get them into your marketing ecosystem? And the bits that come across very strongly from the research and the trust piece, and the amount of websites, we, you know, we, we look at websites because we put booking buttons on them, uh, and the amount of websites we see that don't have a booking button that's got real-time availability or they don't have a compelling social media net around the booking to guide customers through the journey or they don't go anywhere. I mean, what's the website for if it's not giving you a real-time availability? And these are the things that we we, we really go out and, and evangelise about almost because that's just, you might as well just have a booking.com link on your front page. Mm. I think um, also as well, some websites are just so long-winded that you almost lose the interest of the customer, don't you? Like the the booking process, you know, it's like window after window, and and you know, if they know Booking.com or say Expedia or something like that, it's ease of being able to just few clicks and they're done because their profile's saved or whatever. Yep. And, and and when you have to input all that information into something new, it's like oh, maybe I'll just go on Booking.com, not realizing that actually that they're although they're paying full rate on booking.com actually the hotel gets very you know a lot less than that so yeah it's, I, I guess it's just make, making the website more user friendly um so it's yeah so the process is is quick and easy four steps and i think um you know hoteliers are busy and we've, we've all run operations and i think you think right my website's done that's it yep. it's up and it's live but that's not the case. And the, the, the battleground, battleground's a strong term, but the battleground is you can talk about your property in a way that the OTAs can't. You can give insight to your working day and the insight to the fact that you just have fresh meat delivery, whatever you want to do. You can mm -hmm. frame that in a way that the OTAs can't. And the OTAs are always going to have more money than you. They're always going to have a bigger marketing budget than you. They're always going to bid on the keywords more so than you can ever. But what you can do is give that authentic, real uh, essence of what your business is and, and how... Uh, engaging with your brand and your hotel and, and your team is is a wonderful thing rather than going through um if you like quote unquote a soulless booking journey and in the in the emergence of ai and all those other things that are going to make it even more compelling to go with their web proposition you've got to start looking at your own website as a shop window otherwise why is it there mm. what do you i agree with that in? i was just gonna uh, ask yeah, martin go. about this mm. yeah what do no, you please think martin? Do. Yeah, it's um, it's obviously a huge challenge. I'm a great believer when I especially go abroad. I, the UK, I tend to sort of either book the hotel direct or um, at least research it um, on direct websites because I like UK hotel websites. But when I go abroad, I, I only book on booking.com. Um, I've got now to genius level three, I think, which sort of gives you 15% off certain hotels. Um, but you're right, it's such a smooth um, booking process. 
and um, I feel as though they know me. It's just like the train line. I only ever book on the train line. I'd get more money. I'm in York. I'd get more um, money off if I went on LNER's website, but I just book on the train line because it knows me seemingly and I get on. So I can see that. And um, I've got one client who gets less than 5%, um, 30 well, 40, 40 bedrooms, let's say, um, less than 5% of bookings are OTAs because it has high repeat business. I've got another client that's over 50% um, OTA. Mm -hmm. And that point about cost of acquisition or cost of sales is quite right. Yep. Um, when I did a presentation at the National Hotel Marketing Conference three years ago, I got the latest hot stats data and the average for upfront marketing spend in the UK, sort of three and four star hotel market is about 5% of its turn of a hotel's turnover. And then there's another 5% on average going out on commissions. Um, that's 5% of overall turnover. Obviously, commissions mm -hmm. are up at 15 to 20%. Um, so, you know, you've got to see it as a marketing cost. And um, I, I, if I opened a new hotel and didn't have any repeat business because I've just opened a new hotel, I would be reliant on the OTOs. But by year three or year four, if it's an area of the country that has repeat business, You'd like to think that um, you'd you know be up at a good repeat business percentage, but you know it's it's such a an interesting battle. And yep. COVID saw more people go through hotel direct websites because they needed things like information on safety protocols. Um, but since then, since COVID's finished, um, the OTAs have just become even stronger. And uh, they the have, yeah, the swing's gone even further to the OTAs. I really yeah. thought we were turning a curve with yeah. the, you know, changing people's habits, coming direct. Thought, great, this is fantastic. But yeah, it's everyone just swung back into old habits on on uh, as a as the guest journey that yeah. they do. I, I, I think some hotels get you know have heavy wedding business over a hundred weddings mm, a year, and, mm. and that's all direct business, and a lot of it, you know, some of the guests will book through OTAs. Um, group business will come back. Um, you know, the American market's come back yep. already strongly this year. Um, so, and conferences uh, tend to book direct as well. So I, I guess the, the secret is to have the mix, but definitely, as Stuart said, get your OTA bookers back direct. And I, you know, I was at a hotel in Durham that I worked for yesterday, went over to the reception desk and talked about two things with booking.com. One is find out why they are continuing to book through booking.com. Um, and um, the second thing is get their get their email address on a direct basis because the, the registration form was actually pre-filled in by the computer with their booking.com email address. So there was, uh, you know, the receptionist thought that, well, we've got the email address. Well, we haven't. We need it direct. And it's such an easy question um, to ask is for your direct email address so you can send them special offers and deals in the future direct. And then give them a compelling reason, as you say, to come back. We, we always say that as well. We're talking to a hotel in London the other day, and he's like, well, I, I get their email, and then they don't come back. I was like, well, you can't assume they're coming back. You've got to give them a reason. If the cost of acquisition is 20% of the room rate to go to an OTA, rather than giving you a free drink on arrival, I know which I'd rather pay. Um, and that's the that's the beauty of having a, a coherent loyalty scheme and, and, and gift vouchers and that kind of thing. Uh, I, Carl, I, I've got a question. Um, what kind? What? What's the com commission that uh, that Booking.com charge now? Is it like thirty percent or something like that? Thankfully, no. <laughs> You've got two levels. If uh, yeah. you have Don't the basic level, ideas. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they might be tapping this. Um, it's fifteen percent um, uh, for for standard, or if you uh, opt into their preferred partner, which um, boosts your um ranking uh, a little bit that goes up to 18 percent um but obviously then you have all of their guest loyalty programs so their genius programs like martin was saying he's now what's at level 103 or something um he he, he then gets a, a discount so you're discounting the booking.com guest then you're paying the commission so you know it, the overall you know the, the when you look at the revenue you could get direct or the revenue uh, you get from booking.com yes it looks a lot higher uh, than the 18 percent commission because you've actually offered a discount and I think it leads on quite nicely to a point I wanted to raise and that's the two things is is you, as Stuart said your shop window um, hoteliers have the disadvantage of knowing their website so they go on they've helped design it or they've used it many times so they go on they go yeah so you click there you get the availability there and do it. and it's yeah that's dead straightforward 
what I w always recommend, it's not very scientific, but you've always got at least one friend or old relative that is a complete technophobe, or even if you've got someone that's a Luddite, put them on your website and ask them how they found the journey because someone that doesn't know it. And if they hit a stumbling block, that those are the people like you said, Emma, they go, oh, you know, people are, have no attention span. They're bored. They go, 15 seconds, I have, can't book. Oh, I'll just go on booking.com. And yeah. also, you know, they don't know. And then the second point I wanted to raise was um, train your staff. Those telephone uh, reservation agents or your front desk people, I always use booking.com as, as a sort of search engine for an a, a area I don't know. I, you know, I go, oh, yeah, that looks like a nice hotel. Look direct know how the game works. So I give them a call and say, hey, you know, I can see da, 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 you're either, you know, offering genius discount. Can you match that direct? Or how about, you know, I know you're probably paying 15% commission. Could you offer me 10% discount? Um, and 99% of the time you get, oh, no, sorry, I, I can't, I can't authorize that. I can't do that. And you, it's, it's like, why haven't we trained our, our frontline teams in this battle? to those little simple things that they should be able to offer a discount because offering me a 10% discount to come direct is cheaper than paying 15% commission. You still got 5% on your bottom line there. Um, so it's little tricks like that. There's no silver bullet. You know, it's all these just little nudge the dial here, nudge the dial there, improve the guest journey through the booking engine, offer uh, value adds, it's all it's all things like that. I can't say, yeah, after this webinar, go away, change A to B, and you'll pay 50% less commission. Sadly, I don't have that magic wand. No. 37% no. uh, of those 3,000 people, by the way, 37% used OTAs to look for hotels and will, mm -hmm. then, go, will then go and book directly. The two words that, that pop out again and again and again on the research that are really powerful words uh, especially when you're looking at marketing hotels, uh, is trust and sentiment. Mm. So they're saying the trust has got to be there with the web proposition. And we say usually four steps to booking a room is, is, is where you want to be. And the sentiment is quite powerful in the sense that, you know, we did not know that you pay this money out to this company if we come through them. A, we didn't know that. B, we need to trust you to come and put our credit card on your system and so on and so forth. But the sentiment of people that now, off the back of probably the pandemic, I'd guess, want to help UK businesses is quite high as well. So you really have a very, very potent thing to tap into there as a hotelier if you get your journey right. And we've started saying to customers, you know, the same way that you audit bedrooms, audit your website. You know, if like you say, if, if Pete made a good point, if, if you get somebody that's not particularly said tech savvy to come on and use it, and then that booking journey has got to be slick and fast and smooth and beautiful because I can pay with my thumb on the OTAs now rather than putting my card details in. Um, um, that that's got to be as as swift as it can be and then you've got to give a number of reassuring elements on your website through whether it's rolling testimonials or whether it's social media or whether it's videos or whatever it is that keeps people uh from abandoning that journey on your website has got to be done because the sentiment yeah. and the trust is there yeah i yep. mean that's one thing that you really tapped into and and personally that's something that i always do whenever i'm looking at any accommodation be it hotels or you know lodges or whatever i'm always reading the reviews it's so yep. important to me but not just on you know booking.com but on google as well but you know it's an area like you don't know this hotel or it's a new area it's all about the guest reviews the guest experience and that is really important and and i've learned from experience before um years ago i i uh was when I was looking for my wedding venue actually and we got married up in the Highlands and I looked at two two wedding venues I actually looked to to book and we went up and stayed there and one of them the website was incredible but actually when we got there it would just you know oh, it just yeah it it was total false advertising because they had no you know no guest reviews or anything like that they were just you know I was bamboozled by photos really that was all um so yeah reviews are really important to me um and yeah I, I think a lot of people rely solely on that how about you guys Fatty and uh and Guy do you um do you, do you look at reviews as well yes I, I wanted to find out how reliable 
is uh, this uh, uh, booking.com. Like you just uh, ended that uh, you get to, we are told this is what the venue is or whatever it is. And when you get there, you get disappointed. So I wanted to know how reliable actually is this booking.com against oh, what, uh, for the agents, profiles against travel agents because uh, not everybody will be will have the patient to go through the uh, the bookings sometimes the procedures are a bit uh, longer so if you leave it with a travel agent who will be looking for the uh, uh, incentive or the commission that uh, uh, the agent will get and then book uh, a place that to, uh, which will please you, but when you get there, that is not the case. Because I traveled during the, uh, the Christmas holidays, one of these to the agents. And sometimes it is very difficult even to get them to confirm a venue to visit or hotel accommodation. They will give you the accommodation, the brochures, but when you take the hotel room, you find out that is not what was advertised. So what do you do such a situation? So, so with, with regards to the OTAs, um, though the, it's all self-service for the hotelier. So the um, if you if you decide as a hotel to join booking.com and list your, your property on it, you're responsible uh, for loading your own photography up. So if if that photography is, is uh, misleading, a bit of a bit of Photoshop, uh, some you know fisheye lenses to make the room look a bit bigger than it really is, um, then booking.com is 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 just passing that information on to the guest from the hotelier. So I'd, I I um, working with booking.com, I know they're very good at um, distancing themselves from sort of any 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 liability. Um, say so, you know if it, it has been falsely advertised but um, yeah. uh, it, it's a fool's game doing that anyway from a hotelier's point of view because you're just setting yourself up for disappointment aren't you you're just going to have an angry customer <laughs> it's like they're not going to go oh okay fair enough and shrug it off they're going to go no, Gosh, we, this we, isn't we, anything what I was expecting you're exactly yeah. right and, and booking.com would say that we we have real-time reviews from consumers that that would point out or highlight uh, where you aren't performing against what what you're selling I guess uh, but one thing that that I wrote down then is it happened just the other week because you are um, uh, you are penalised for not having correct photography or good photography on on the OTAs and you get a property score. Many hoteliers that we talk to have a much better shop window again on the ATA than they do on their own website because they put all the photos on the OTAs. Yeah, and that seems counterintuitive to me as well. Oh, agreed. I didn't realise that. Mm. Can I, sorry, I, I have to leave for this 11 o'clock client meeting. I'm really sorry. Of course. This, no, that's all right, Martin. This is a very important subject. Um, I will share my um, email address. It would be good to keep in contact with you guys on this subject. Um, yeah, absolutely. With pleasure. Um, I'm just down the road from you, I think, Martin, if you're in New York. So. Oh, wow. Oh, well, well uh, I, do, I do have beer or coffee meetings. <laughs> <laughs> <Good comments. laughs> I'll pop my email address and I'll uh, hopefully speak to you soon, yeah? Yeah, it'll be do really good. Want, uh, do All you the want best, Martin. to put your email address just in on the chat? Just I'll to... just put it on the chat now, okay? Yeah, okay, brilliant. All right. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Thanks, Martin. Cheers. Bye, Martin. Hey. All the best. Thank you. I, I wanted to bring up a point, I think... Um, as you said, um, Emma, when you were uh, shopping in the Highlands, um, a lot of websites don't, uh, a, a lot of hotels on their direct website don't list guest reviews. And it's about building that trust and loyalty. So people might hit your own website, they go through the booking and uh, journey and everything, you might have that really smooth, they've not stayed with you before, and they want that reassurance. So you, you're not providing it that with them on your own website so they slip off and then they end up on booking.com to find those reviews and hey guess what it's actually really just dead quick to book here rather than going back to that other tab i had open so I'm you've guilty. lost them yeah i'm guilty yep. of doing yep. exactly that um yeah in fact yep. actually we we did it only a couple of weeks ago um as the institute we were looking for accommodation up in birmingham and yep. i like I booked a room because it was quick and easy. Yeah, guilty yep. about doing it as well. Um, that's, that's but yeah, looked at reviews. It was all quick. And also rate wise, it was like 
I think it was about £20 cheaper on booking.com yeah. and I went to Hotel Direct and said, look, I can get a rate here. And they were like, mm, can't really do that. Um, and I said, OK, well, you know, we have to get the cheapest rate. So I ended up booking on. Yeah, of booking. course. Um, yeah. Yeah. Guilty. Yeah. yeah, guilty as charged, definitely. <laughs> listen, to what, listen to what we're saying, Emma. You know, listen to the language yeah. we're all using here. You, you aren't giving me a compelling reason to come to your hotel directly. Mm. I've got this thing in my pocket that I can put my thumb on that will send me everything I need. And you're giving me barriers to come to your hotel. That's yeah. the, everything that this research says. You've got the yeah. trust and you've got the sentiment, but you've got mm -hmm. to get all that difficulty out of the way. And you've got to give me that reassuring net when I click on your website that, A, I'm going to get the best rate. You're going to give me reasons to keep booking. And then you're going to give me some information that I can't get through the OTA because it's personalized to me. And if yeah. I'm really good, you're going to kick me into your marketing ecosystem. And from there on, you can reward me for coming directly. That's the game. Yeah. So on a, a real basic level, I think what, what you need to ensure um, is rate parity. You know, why why are you selling cheaper on, on booking.com? If you've opted into the or, or there are other OTA out there, it's, it feels like it's turning into a bit of a booking.com bashing. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but everyone knows them. Um, but, uh, you, you know, why are you offering it cheaper? If you've signed up to their loyalty program, the Genius program, you know, why aren't you offering that? Uh, discount direct to the to the guest um and, and in a way that, that all the answers are are there go on your booking.com profile through the guest journey and you think okay i'm getting the reviews i'm you know it's a really simple four-step booking process um and you, you, you know the pictures are all good um and all of this look at your own website are you offering the same journey um quick shameless plug you know obviously high level software has a really slick um four step uh, booking engine but it also we partner with um tools such as the hotel network and they are plugins a plugin that will sit on your own website that will bring in uh real time guest reviews it also does price comparison so if you if you have got at least parity, it will show that the rates are no better at booking.com in in the live search date to date. And obviously, if you've if if you're showing that on your website, it encourages you as a hotel to offer a cheaper offer um, for your own website. So then hopefully, you know, the guest is getting the reviews, is getting a nice, simple booking engine. Um, and it will show that you you know you're at 99 pounds and booking.com expedia and the such like are at 120 so the guest doesn't leave your website to go and see if they're getting the best deal you're providing all the information they need and the reassurance you need just to go direct and bosh they've booked trust, and you've worked yeah just, just like that compelling reason yeah um, <laughs> i've i've been in rooms recently and i won't name them but i was i was sat with a hotelier and his salesperson came in he's like i've got this company they want to give us 200 room nights a year they want best available rate they want free parking they want a discount on food and beverage and he said no now i find that very interesting because if i'm giving 20 percent of a room rate to booking.com what's the harm in a encouraging people to eat in the restaurant that might not have done anyway and b locking in 200 rooms directly i think yep. it's quite it's just a different way of framing business that i think perhaps um needs addressing sometimes if you've got that guarantee of 200 rooms direct and you're not willing to give them the same level of discount they'd get for pressing their thumb through an OTA, there's something wrong. Yep. It all goes down, I think, to that mix because as went back in my previous role it, with sales and, and, and revenue for, for the hotels that I was looking after, my greatest fear was that if you become too reliable on the OTAs, what happens the day that they turn around and go, OK, so what we're doing is we're moving our basic commission from 15 percent to 18 yeah. percent and our, our enhanced to from 18 to 20. You know, your, your hands are tied. You think, oh, my gosh, I've got, you know, 75, 80 percent of my bookings mm -hmm. come through your channel. Uh, all of a sudden, I've, you know, it's eaten straight into my bottom line or I've got to put prices up. And, you know, then you are you as competitive? So it's it, 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 there's no point us sitting here saying. You're going to get rid of OTAs altogether. They serve yeah. serve a purpose, but it's it's having a, a healthy mix uh, of, of of channels to to ensure oh, that you true. can shoulder any increases. Because I I honestly personally feel uh, that it's only a matter of time until they turn around and say we're upping our commission rates.
or a new hotel opens down the road and you haven't got any loyalty there because you haven't built relationships with your customers. Yeah, that's true as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, everything's going up, isn't it? It's only a matter of time before uh, uh, before the OTAs raise their rates as well. And uh, yeah, okay. Um, what are the reasons why, um, like, so we've, we've covered about, um, you know, sort of the ease of OTAs. Is there any other reasons why, why, um, why people would choose an OTA over direct uh, booking? Uh, we obviously we've covered the price. The yep. um, what about choice as well? You know, if, well, if you don't yeah. know an area. Yeah, yeah. I think um, it's it's very interesting, especially when you look at the next generation. If you look at Gen Z or Gen Z, however you want to say it, uh, they are now. Uh, their booking patterns and interests, are, are, they're much more willing to go further afield. So the OTAs are embracing this because they're saying, you know, York's down the road, for example, rather than staying in York, what if you stayed in a meadow year 10 miles out of York? And they've got more of an appetite to do those things. And OTAs are harvesting this very intelligently by giving a wider net of, uh, a wider field reference and a wider degree of choice. Uh, and, and to combat that, again, it just comes back to building relationships and rewarding people to coming through directly. That's, that's, the key element of being a hotelier now is you've got to get those relationships. You've got to have a loyalty system. You've got to have marketing that's compelling and you've got to create an air of trust around your products. And I think um, regardless of, of, of what the choice is, if you build those relationships at grassroots, uh, I used to run sales teams across a number of hotels and it was all about relationships and reward and recognition because um, the choice is just going to get more compelling, isn't it? Airbnb wasn't there. What, 10 years ago 15 years ago and now yeah. yeah now a huge huge player in the ota market as well isn't it huge. Um, yeah 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 um yeah massive because people then sort of look at oh, what's your night like, maybe not just a hotel look at the wider option and in fact actually like going back to booking.com they're not just hotels anymore are they they no. they've got apartments and all kinds of different accommodation <laughs> they... in there giving a, a wider choice <laughs> So yeah, so it does yeah, it does open up that market yeah. even more for um yeah, okay. It does. I think that could be a whole uh, another episode of in conversation. The, uh, air, the, the 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 fact that Airbnb is now on the scene as from a from a revenue manager's point of view. In the past, you used to know how many rooms there were available in your in your marketplace, and now you've just got no idea because you know. Uh, Jim and Sue have decided to let two of their spare rooms on Airbnb and then you know it's just it's just a minefield yeah. but anyway that for for another conversation somebody, somebody said to me the day, I was at a meeting and somebody said oh Airbnb uh, now allows different people to stay in a let so if a house has got four rooms four different people can have four different bookings isn't that clever I said isn't that that's just hostels isn't it and that's yeah it's the same I don't think it's revolutionary um so I think the, the other thing we always get asked when we talk about OTAs is people say, oh, well, Premier Inn don't use them. And we go, yeah, because Premier Inn's got 800 hotels and wherever there is a Premier Inn, you'll, wherever you want to be, there will be a Premier Inn. So you're always going to need OTAs and you're always going to have OTA bookings. But the, the essence of this is make sure that you are match fit for that booking journey and make sure that you're giving compelling reasons to come direct and make sure that you're taking care of the journey afterward. Um, and I think operators really oh well, let me ask Pete because you, you you've recently done it what should operators be doing to optimize online presence and drive direct Pete? I think that's a good a good thing to expand on friend I I, I agree so uh, just one point I wanted to raise as well that you say that Premier Inn don't use them uh, uh, OTAs they don't use them domestically the, yeah. you, you know that but if you're international traveler you you will find uh OTAs um Premier Inn listed so that again it's all about the mix um, <laughs> yeah yeah um with regards to operators I think um a little bit of you know uh Generation Z Generation Z you know they're looking more for experiences and they want to you know f you know <laughs> feel you know understand the ethos of, of, of the business as well they're not looking for just a soulless you know um uh you know transaction of mm -hmm. staying in a room you know if they if you, you you can really um you know there's a lot of hotels are doing a lot of great work uh about reducing their carbon footprint 
being more, you know, socially responsible, uh, community uh, driven um, ethos and things like that. And it's really important to make sure that you uh, that you're sharing that out to your to your audiences and 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 you have those stories to tell mm-hmm. um, on your direct channel. Whereas, you know, as you say, it's 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 a bit of, you know, booking.com's very much um, like Amazon is, isn't it? It's very convenient. You can click in order and there you go, you're done. Or you can go and hit your high street and see all the boutique uh, independent shops and things like that. You know, the, the, there is a, a re-immersion of people wanting to, to feel that it, it, it's more of a, you know, individual um, relationship with them rather than just, you know, a guest going through the cogs. So it, it, it's sort of angling that direct um, marketing strategy and, and your social media um, through that. Uh, I saw um, in the last um, sort of 12 to 18 months, uh, a large uptick of social media being a referral to, to our bookings. Um, and you can also embed uh, your, your book now button onto your social media page and we're seeing an increase um, in in the younger generation who are starting to to travel now um, choose that route you, you made a very good point pete for booking direct so we we've done a lot with uh, looking at gen z recently they're, they're coming to economic power i'm a millennial uh, and, and statistically i stay three times a year for a leisure a leisure break statistically that might not always be true but Gen Z are doing that now. They've come to economic power. Yeah. Uh, and they are uh, looking at hotels differently and they're looking at journeys of bookings differently. And the, the point that Pete made there is a very, very potent one. They, they want, um, there's, a, there's a number of things that is important to them. Sustainability, wellness, as in wellness of how they will feel after staying with you or while staying with you. The wellness of your team is very important. How you are looking after your employees as in the hotel, yeah, that's very, very important now. Uh, they, t- they think travel should be inclusive. There shouldn't be barriers to, to to accessing any level of accommodation. You know, I don't have to stay in a suite, but perhaps I could stay in a year. Uh, and they want experiences. Now, if you're a hotelier, the smart thing to do is to load your website now with local experiences that they can access by coming to talk to you rather than, quote unquote, faceless OTA. Now, they're going to get there with AI. That's going to happen automatically. It's going to give you recommendations based on your preferences as you click through. But as a hotelier, now is the time to start, A, having compelling social media that talks about sustainability and wellness and local experiences and how you look at yep. it. And B, get it on your website and start blogging and use the benefit of Google search. Mm-hmm. Any hotel worth its salt has got a crisp white pillowcase, right? So, you know, why are you, why are you sharing that on your website or your, <laughs> or, or your social media? You know what, 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 what's the experience that you offer, and it, I suppose it comes down to that sort of age-old rule of, um, you know, revenue management. What is there isn't actually any real true demand for a hotel room. Um, sort of, it, it's sort of the, the water's got a bit muddied during uh, the pandemic or after lockdowns. People did just want to go away to stay in a different room because <laughs> they were sick of their own homes. But really, the demand for your hotel is. There's a, you know, you're convenient for the airport. You've got a, you're, you've got a, a local attraction. There's an event going on. Um, you know, they want to experience your your destination restaurant. Um, the, there's very little that people go. I just want to stay in a hotel room for the sake of that. So yeah. it's it's what are you thinking? For? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Well, certainly with the cost of living crisis, you know, like people's mortgage bills and things like that going up. That that sort of that leisurely oh I think we'll just go and stay in a hotel when actually my mortgage is going up and I actually really need to yeah I need to make sure my bills are paid yep. first so yeah. yeah really important. however when people are going away they're going away more so because revenge travel so <laughs> yeah when they go away they're going away uh properly is a is a glib word but properly so they're going away and, and making it more of a deal of it than they did do before and as a result uh you know i think if you look at the emergence of the new brands budget is going to get more budget budget hotels going to get more budget within a couple of years budget hotels will probably be autonomous you'll probably check in there probably won't be as many team members around the world because that will suit investor models whereas luxury hotels are getting more luxurious and they're doing that through technology and uh, and benefit of experience it's the ground in the middle uh, where you've got to start fighting a bit more now and i think uh to the, the distance between upper four star and a five host star hotel is, is sizable still so you've got to a experiences trust sentiment 
all those things, marketing ecosystem, uh, because people are going away. And uh, actually 83%, here's an interesting stat for you, 83% of those 3,000 people surveyed uh, are looking to book a holiday this year, but domestically, rather than going away. Interesting. Um, pandemic happened last. Yes. You've got a question. Yeah, sorry, I saw your hand up. I didn't want to interrupt, Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I, I wanted also to add uh, to it that uh, the hotels to, uh, to introduce more uh, uh, indoor activities yeah. to keep uh, people in and outdoor too, because uh, people have stayed in and they want a different, something yeah. different which will entice them, inspire them to come back. And um, they can even be creative, something that is not there. They can put it there so that they will come. And like uh, I heard somebody mention uh, the, the youth, the trend now, they are looking for advent, uh, adventure. So when they come and those adventurous things are there, it will incite them to book, to go to those kind of uh, hotels. And the service is good, perfect. They will be, for everyone, they will always want to return. So Which is right. Be, yeah. Again, yep. it's added value, isn't it? And you, you're giving them an experience that perhaps they wouldn't have gotten if they'd just chosen another reason, another hotel provider. I, I think we're, we're quite fortunate in that the, the, the uh, strongest uh, tool in our, our, our fight against uh, the cost of living is that people hate being miserable. So um, if they're sat at home feeling miserable, uh, it is surprising how um, you find the budget to go off and treat yourself and do something. And I think, you know, the, again, we keep sort of dragging up the pandemic, but I think the pandemic really sort of cemented that sort of frame of mind that it's, you know, we need to get out and and do something and 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 treat ourselves. But you're right; it, it, it the people's uh, purse strings are going to have to tighten. Um, so it, it, it's in our interest, um, or in hoteliers' interests, um, to ensure that um, it, it's that it's that value for money. And if you can um, put all of that value for money and experience um, through your direct channel. You, you're going to benefit from um, sort of steering people off the convenience of booking through the OTA. It's absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when I was a young chap and much slimmer and less grey and, uh, and and didn't have a beard, uh, I used to work in hotels. And uh, when I was young, I worked in a really nice one. I was lucky. My first hotel was spectacular. Uh, and I was told hospitality is the anticipation of meeting the needs of others. And I think that's perhaps what we're seeing now more so in terms of, you know, creating an experience around your stay, giving me a reason to come back, anticipating my next journey, anticipating my next visit, anticipating my family needs. And it's the same as what Fatty was just saying there. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think guest experience is like, yeah, again, probably another chat for another conversation, but, you know, not just in hotels, but all kinds of hospitality, that guest experience is so important. Um, mm -hmm. Just to give you an example, I, I go camping quite a lot with my family exactly the same thing you know looking online looking on websites and things like that and uh yeah the experience or what they have to off offer that just a field is massively important to me um i just took all, all my uh, my children to a campsite that had a bar a mobile bar which is sounds sounds bizarre but you know it was uh that that actually was really important for the other families that came. Um, so oh, yes. yeah, it's not just yeah, it's it's the anticipation of me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's experience. Oh yeah, it's funny. We were talking the other day. Um, there's a chap that I follow, much more intelligent than I, on LinkedIn, and he says you've got 18 summers with your kids if you're lucky. You've got 18 summers, yeah. and we have 52 weekends a year. So I expanded his idea. So I, I use the 52 weekends. Here. Um, so what, what hoteliers should be doing now through their website and through their social media is convincing me that you're not going to ruin my weekend that I have with my family. That time that I have at the end of the week after working very, very hard, I've got 48 hours with them to enjoy. And you need to give me all these compelling reasons and all these compelling arguments as to why I should come and place my money with you. Uh, and that's what the website should be doing. And that is the essence, really, of anticipating my needs, giving me a reason to come back and uh, not making the journey too arduous to book with you. Absolutely. Guy, have you got any uh, questions or thoughts on this topic at all? Sorry? Have you got any questions or thoughts on this topic at all? Sorry to put you on the spot. That's all right. <laughs> no, I, I was just reassuring you 
Well, what's been said is, I, 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 we tend to go away and we book a cottage, but I go away on business. And um, I, use the, I use the OTAs, much like I do Google to try and find someone. And to be honest, I usually go to end up going to Travel Lodge or Premier Inn because it, where I particularly go is Chester where the races are on because I'm going to be working at the races. Um, so straight away, all the, all the rack rates go sky high. Um, but on occasion, I have stayed in independent places on the outskirts of Chester, and not one of them has ever taken my contact details and has never ever marketed me through in the three years I've been going. Wow. They're not a HLS customer, then they're not one of ours, guy, because they wouldn't no, be. No, no, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah. Shameless plug number two uh, our uh, <laughs> contactless, uh, our contactless uh, check in uh, recognizes if it's a, a generic OTA uh, email and leaves it blank. Um, so the guest has to input their own email address to complete the check in process. So at least you're capturing. Uh, that data and then if they obviously they tick that that special uh, GDPR uh, box you've uh, you, you 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 can then um, tell them of all the wonderful experiences um, for that they could uh, enjoy on their next visit. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just need to take a photo of the um, of the conversation. Is everyone happy to have? Yeah, their... sure. Something like this or. <laughs> 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 we were doing well weren't we as well <laughs> there you go i've just taken a couple of photos so, um, so to, to wrap this up um i know you've got a couple of articles that you've written about this and um i'm going to put them in the chat now so if anyone wants to see them um and then also just to let you know um when this is on demand, I will also put those links um, on the on the text underneath the on demand as well. So you can refer back to that. So um, I'm going to just put that on the chat now while I remember. Um, do you want to just talk about that as well, guys, about your articles? Yeah, well, I mean, as we said, it, it was research that we conducted uh, CGI brand Nielsen RQ. It's very, very, very in depth. Uh, the, the Zonal website is a treasure trove of information for the people in hospitality. Uh, and I really would look at it because it really is compelling and it's uh, you can shape uh, the future architecture of your business around some of the insight because it's, it's so thorough. It's very, very good. Mm. Yeah. Do you, does anyone have any questions at all on this topic? No, oh, we no, no. I, as well. I think <laughs> it's uh, oh. definitely making me think, uh, you know, like not using OTAs where I can and using those little techniques that you've said as a, this is as a consumer, but, you know, to actually say, look, I know you, I can book you through booking.com, but I want to come direct to give you the on the business can you give me 10 percent off I'm gonna yeah do it's, 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 i suppose it's educating the the general public as well mm. that, that you know that 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 that, that, that that's that cost um um and i think that you, you know websites your own website should you know um uh be unapologetic um uh about um stating that you know if you book mm. direct you you can get um uh, get that discount. Yeah. I, I I I did a campaign that was called uh, hashtag Real Genius um, that uh, gave gave ten percent off for for guests. So um, I've it's... probably breached so many trademarks with that, but hey, it it, it worked <laughs> and it was a bit tug of cheek. <laughs> it, it's just so important. I mean, I'd, I've been trying to look for somewhere last minute to go this weekend, um, and. It's, it's, you know the first thing I did was went straight while well, I was looking on Airbnb to be fair and different stuff but you know it's I should just phone up the hotels direct which I think I'm going to do and go have you got a spare you know have you got a room spare room yeah, 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 yeah. have you got a room for Saturday night <laughs> um, if you a discount send them our way yeah, yeah 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 this gives you more more um what's the word uh it gives you more sort of negotiation power, doesn't it? If you can go into, if you can look on booking.com or Expedia or hotels.com yep. or those OTAs and, 
and do that price comparison, then ring up the hotel direct and say, well, look, hey, I can find this. I can book a room in your hotel for this. What can Mm. you do if I come direct and just see? Yeah, just, you know, you like even if the reservation agent doesn't realize um, about the whole commission thing, surely Mm. you should be able to get, you know, it it just Mm. gives you a a little bit bit more ammunition to try and uh, try and get a decent rate, I guess. So uh, (laughs) there lies the problem. Yeah, yeah, that's the really yeah. important, the really important thing. Um, obviously, yeah. for anyone that's watching this on demand, if you're a hotelier, which we're hoping lots of are, it's like I think it was like you said, Steve, uh, Stuart. Sorry, um, is to actually train your reservation staff, train your reception staff. Yep. To give, they should have a little crib sheet there it, even if it's updated on a weekly basis right this is the range of discounts you can give this week you know we can only offer five percent this week but don't say it's five percent do it as a monetary value or whatever and it, it, it's obviously it's going to change seasonally Definitely. or depending how busy they are in because, previous lives you just give a list of the ota arrivals and ask them why they're here and get an answer and get the emails. yeah Exactly. Yep. I mean, you know, if I if I phoned up a hotel now and I said, "Oh, is there any chance I can get ten percent discount?" If the if the receptionist or the reservation would say, "Well, actually, I can't offer you ten percent at the moment, but how about 6 I'd say, "Yeah, mm. you know, yeah, because- yeah. savings are saving." <laughs> or how about twenty five percent off your next night as well if you stay? How about night? how about yep. a bottle of wine? Because we know that the bottle of wine cost price is going to be, you know, a lot cheaper than say what what you buy it from. Yeah. The- you know, added, yeah, yeah, added value, and it, it, yeah. it, 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 as well. If you're doing those added value, it's been, it's, a, it's recognizing as well, um, what, what, the reason for, for travel, because yeah. you know, if uh, Stuart, as he says, he's, he's off traveling on, off on business, and you, you know, Tuesday night, you offer him a bottle of champagne to book direct. It sounds nice, but it's not really what yeah. I'm, he's looking yeah, exactly. for. Um, yeah, but you know, oh, Wednesday. For, for, yeah, yeah when, when, <laughs> why Wednesday? <laughs> but but uh, yeah, or even like um, she could say, you know, depending on the week, I can't, off, I can't actually off, offer you anything off the accommodation, but I can give you ten percent off any food and beverage. Yeah. yeah, and then you've got the people, you've got them eating in your hotel. Whereas actually, I was only going to, I was only going to stay to visit relatives, and we're going to eat at their house. But yeah. You know what i will eat there now because it's and get all the family into the restaurant as well exactly yeah. exactly yeah, so different there's reasons. different strings yeah. to the bows right that they, they you, you can pull it's as, as i said before and I'll, I'll say it again there's no silver bullet i'm afraid it's just little turns of the dial here and yeah. there and and hopefully overall that yeah. that does reduce your reliance on, on the ota as soon as that reservation person says no and doesn't offer anything else you've lost me because I would yeah. go, all right, and I'm going to go and book on booking.com because I can get it 20% yeah. cheaper. Yeah, well, or even, if, okay. even if you don't phone and you're on the on the website, any hurdles yeah. that on your website, it, the, if, you, if your website isn't as easy to book as booking.com, you lose them as well. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Right, well, we, we've run out of time, unfortunately. So, um, so I just wanted to thank you both, Pete and Stuart, for hosting today's in conversation. Thank, thank you, guys. It's a pleasure. For, thank you, guys, for attending and Louise as well. Um, and uh, like I said, this uh, will be available on demand in a week's time, um, and it will also be posted uh, on other channels as well, so social media and also on the Zonal website as well. Um, I've put those links on the meeting chat as well for further information if anyone's interested, but they will be posted up um, uh, on demand as well. So thank you guys, everyone, for um, for coming. It's it's been a really interesting conversation and uh, hope you have a lovely day. All right. Yeah, all the best. Bye-bye. Thank you.